this in my vision and I just thought that that when I come up I would just speak a word of encouragement I don't know what family may be here maybe a global family but God will make a way where there seems to be no way he walks in ways we cannot see and he will make a way for you he will be your God holds you closely to his side with love and strength for each new day he will make a way he will make let's sing it one more time with faith in our hearts God will make a way yes he will where there seems to be no way he walks in ways we cannot see he will make a way for me he will be my God holds me closely to his side with love and strength for each new day he will make a way let me speak to that family there are times when you may not see the wind there are times when you may not see the rain yet by an act that only god can define and describe the valley shall still be filled with water listen we are people who understand the principles of the kingdom and i'm committed to teaching us the principles of the kingdom but the presence of god can never be exalted above principles because there are times you will do everything right and it just will not work at that point you do not need formulas you need jesus it takes the know-how to be able to go and fish it takes having a good net to catch fish it takes a functional boat to catch fish but there are times that you can have the knowledge there are times you can have a good boat there are times your net can be good there are times you can even be at sea and you will still not catch fish at that point you need to leave the idea of being a fisherman you don't need fishing at that point you need Jesus he's the only one who can make a sea that has no fish at the instance of his word we must never exalt principles above and beyond his presence he's still the monarch of the universe and I've told you in God's economy one plus one should be two but there are times where one plus one plus God equals whatever answer he puts there whereas ordinarily one plus one should be two when God wants to change the equation he adds himself one plus one plus God three men in the fire plus one looking like the son of man the son of God and these were men that the fire had no power over hallelujah so there is no reason to come to church and feel downcast and feel discouraged now it may not be for everybody but just allow me a minute or two to just bring that word if God showed me that vision it means that there might be someone who came to church it might even be a family and you have just come and you're saying Lord I love you and I will not stop loving you but can you at least show me a token of your mercy let me know that this thing works the Bible calls him our ever-present help in time of need hallelujah find strength the God of heaven is still alive Savior, He can move a mountain. Your God is mighty to save. 
He is mighty to save forever. The author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus, sing Savior, Savior. He can move a mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. One more time. Sing Savior. Savior. He can move a mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. He rose and conquered the grave. He rose and conquered my pain. He conquered my pain. He rose and conquered my shame. He rose and conquered my pain. Savior, He can move a mountain. My God is. Forever, author of salvation, let it be so for you in the name of Jesus. God bless you again. It's good to see everyone. Please be seated always a delight to be in the presence of the lord the psalmist said i was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the lord hallelujah in his presence the bible declares there is fullness of joy and at his right hand pleasures forevermore just two or three functions very quickly and then we'll get to the ministry of the word i welcome everyone very specially in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God thank you so much for coming the Lord honor you and we have a very wonderful woman of God in our midst amazing to see her ladies and gentlemen please help me welcome Shoma Jesus hallelujah blessings to you we love you thank you thank you so so much an amazing amazing woman of God who has been a blessing to everyone please be seated um, let me start tonight by appreciating our medical team let's give them a big big god bless you is this the best you can do hallelujah as you know um, yesterday they had some time visiting the idp camp at apo with quite a lot of people and I was very humbled and touched when I saw the photos and um, it's a test run to our um, the humanitarian services that we'll be doing remember that we are light the Bible says and we are salt and um, it was a very humbling experience we had the privilege to um, dig and to build a very quality borehole for them serve them medical attention and food and just share the love of jesus with them and i think that 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 for me i was very very encouraged so medical people thank you so much and all of you who all the medical people paramedics who were part of the volunteers may the lord bless you in the name of jesus christ amen and amen um the Lord will grant us grace to do more for his kingdom in Jesus' name. Second is a very important meeting. Please let me reiterate it here. That on Tuesday, Tuesday by 6 on the dot, we're having our workers meeting. Please, all workers, 
this is compulsory every worker should plan and make the sacrifice to be there six is when we're starting so please do well to be sure that you are there the venue is doa our other auditorium opposite setraco praise the name of the lord heads of department please take note to emphasize this announcement tuesday by 6 p.m the the third announcement is a workers appreciation dinner now we have a culture as a ministry that at the end of every year we create a platform where we truly appreciate our esteemed workforce i believe that when people invest their lives their time their resources their loyalty to stand by you and stand with you as far as serving the purposes of the kingdom is concerned there should be an avenue where you get to express gratitude and so this for us as a ministry is our platform it's an annual event is part of our activities and um, zaria had theirs over the weekend it was a beautiful time and for us in abuja here is going to be friday friday it starts by 5 p.m red carpet starts by 5 p.m the venue is right here so please do well um, to know you can get more information from your heads of department please it is strictly for workers it is not a koinonia service it's a workers appreciation dinner i'm saying this so that we avoid any kind of embarrassment we love you but we intend to be very strict on this praise the name of the lord if we're in agreement say amen amen, amen. And then let me again appreciate all who have come i know that we do this once in a while but I just felt stirred in my heart again to do uh, to do this um, all of our guests and family who have come from diaspora you have come from outside of Nigeria if you're here in uh, on ground please do communication, communication of, of truth and, and doctrine, doctrine is concerned, concerned. And so we will, we will stress, stress what, what needs to be stressed, stressed. We, will we will emphasize what needs, what needs to be emphasized, to be emphasized. And, and as, as much, much as possible, possible we will capture every dimension that, that makes for your revealing jesus, jesus and, and your excelling in life hallelujah it will not tire me to reiterate the scripture jeremiah 3 15 that i will give you pastors or shepherds that are according to my heart the bible says and that they will feed you with knowledge and understanding so primarily the assignment of every man and woman of God, as far as building the believers is concerned, is to feed them with knowledge and understanding. In the name of Jesus Christ. And um, God has helped us week in, week out. We have considered a number of areas, touching across several areas of the kingdom of life to the end that we will be grounded in the knowledge of God and then be established in truth. Let me encourage us before we deal with tonight's topic, you must be very intentional about ensuring that the truths that are communicated do not just fall on deaf ears. The Bible says, now that ye know these things, it says, happy are you if you do them. Hallelujah. For a long, long time, time we've had people, people in the body, body of Christ, Christ who are not ignorant, but, but they still lack results because the, the discipline to, to take that which they have learned under God, God and, and to engage it appropriately to, to produce results, results for them, them uh, most, most people don't, don't have that staying power. So, so you, you must be very, very committed to your growth. growth. You, you have, have a responsibility under God, God to see to it that as the word of God comes, your heart becomes like the good soil that is able to produce 30-fold, 60-fold, and even 100-fold. The Bible says that the good soil represents those who had the word and understood it. And they walked in keeping with that truth and those principles. And inevitably they had results. So it is dangerous to continue listening to truth after truth, reciting them, supposedly being aware, aware of them, them and, and then, then your life does, does not capture the results eventually your christian experience will be full of frustration 
you will get to a point where you will be angry at God, you will be angry at men, you will be angry at preachers, because almost everything that you will be taught, you will know it as far as awareness is concerned. And yet your life will not be able to capture the kind of experience that a person that knowledgeable should have. So make up your mind that every time you approach God to learn, you are learning so that you will have understanding and then you obtain grace from God. That is why at the end of every discussion, every communication of truth, the Lord grants us grace to be able to pray. That prayer is obtaining grace from the Lord so that we now walk in keeping with the principles that are guaranteed the manifestation of the results. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise the name of the Lord. Tonight, I'm, I'm teaching on a topic, topic called, called Blessed by Association. Please lend me your attention. Remember that for every one of us who is listening to this, there are multiple destinies that are connected to us. I want to show you by the word of God tonight that the power and the price and the necessity of having strategic relationships and associations. Hallelujah. Blessed by association. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 20. Proverbs 13 and verse 20. The Bible says, He that walketh with the wise shall be wise. That means when he began his journey, he was not yet wise. But, but he made, made up his mind, mind that he walked with, with the wise. He that, that walks with, with the wise. The Bible, Bible says he shall, shall be wise. He says, says but the companion of fools shall be destroyed. destroyed. Very, Very instructive statement. He that, that walketh with, with the wise shall be wise. wise. The Bible, Bible says, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. destroyed. While we're discussing relationships as one of the ministries that are made for the rising and the excelling of believers in this kingdom. As you know, we rise in this kingdom on the strength of the ministries, the truths that we have found and know. When we apply these truths, they are called the ministries of the kingdom. They sustain the ability to lift us beyond our current level and bring us to a point where our lives can become true reflections of the glory and the grace of God. Are we together? Please write this down. Relationships are advantageous connections. We'll just put this as an introduction, then we'll look at a few scriptures and I'll begin to build from there. Relationships are advantageous connections. I'm defining for you relationships now. Relationships are advantageous connections, comma, that are mutually beneficial to all the parties involved. Relationships are advantageous connections that are mutually beneficial to all the parties involved. That means when, when you say that, that you are in a relationship of any sort, it means that there is a connection between you and those persons that is advantageous and that it must or should be mutually beneficial to all the parties involved. Are we together? The, the easiest way to succeed in life is through relationships. relationships. How, How true this is. is. That, that the, the easiest way a man or a woman, woman whether, whether in ministry, whether in business, business whether, whether in, in career, career whether, whether in family life, life the, the easiest way to, to succeed in life is through relationships. relationships. When, when the Lord brought, brought us to this city, city I, I saw this in the, the most explicit and most fruitful way uh, that, that I can, can ever be seen. seen. That, that the easiest way, way to, to succeed in life is through relationships. relationships. Are you still writing? writing? Number, Number three. Everything, everything in life multiplies on the basis of relationships. That, that means multiplication only happens. Multiplication is only a possibility because of relationships. Everything in life multiplies 
on the, the basis of relationships. Biologically, it takes a husband and his wife to have children, even for plants, even for animals. Multiplication demands and requires relationships. Are we together? It is your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ through the experience of new birth that has made you today a recipient of eternal life. It is your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, your relationship with the Holy Spirit today that guarantees that you are His own. Relationships are powerful. Everything in life multiplies on the basis of relationships. The last, last point, and then we we'll look, look at a few scriptures. scriptures. Relationships are currencies. Write, Write it down, down, please. Relationships are currencies. That means they, they can, can purchase, purchase things, they, they can, can purchase, purchase people, and they, they can, can purchase, purchase conditions into our lives. lives. Relationships are currencies. Like, like you have Naira, you have the dollar, you have the pound. Relationships are currencies. They can purchase things, they can purchase people, and they can purchase conditions into our lives. What a powerful currency that can purchase things, can purchase men, and can purchase conditions, states of living, conditions into our lives. Hallelujah. For reference, let's look at Genesis chapter 12. We're going to be contrasting scripture after scripture. Genesis chapter 12, we'll read the first five verses. Please pay attention. This was the Lord giving, um, giving Abraham now, before he was saved to Abraham, an instruction. Follow carefully. Now that the Lord said unto Abraham, Abraham now, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, Follow carefully, carefully. And, and from, from thy, thy father's house, house unto a land that I will show you. Who did the Lord speak to? Abraham. Okay, verse 2. The Bible says, And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make your name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Verse 3. The Bible says, And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curses thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Pay attention to 4 and 5. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to who? Him. God spoke to Abraham silver and in gold. Verse 3. The Bible says, And he went on his journeys from the south even to Bethel, unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Hai. Okay, go ahead. Unto the place of the altar, which he had made there at the first. And there Abraham called upon the name of the Lord. Verse 5. Everyone, please read verse 5. Ready? One to read. And Lot also, which went with Abraham. Stop. Stop. Why is the Bible giving us this information? Just tell us Lot had flocks. Lot had herds and he had tents. But the Bible is very meticulous to describe the basis for this man's blessing. He says, And Lot also, among the many that went with Abraham, there is this man who is what studying, a case study indeed. And Lot also, which went with Abraham, had flocks and herds and tens say blessed by association verse 6 and the land was not able to bear them again that they might dwell together uh oh how can god call one man and then another man says i will follow and now they get to a point where you do not even know who god called again because of the abundance of what they had the bible says the land was not able to bear them not him them that they might dwell together for their substance was great so that they could not dwell together stop there 
God calls Abraham in chapter 12. Lot went with him. The result, everything God did to Abraham, he know the difference. Because one person decided that he would be blessed, if not by divine ordination, then he would be blessed by association. Our next scripture. Are you ready for this? Jonah chapter 1. Don't laugh. Be serious. This is the house of God. Jonah chapter 1. Let's start from verse 1. Are you ready? Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the son of Amittai, saying, It's a long reading. Let's be patient. Arise. Go to Nineveh. Remember God called Jonah to alone. They did it for me. Uh-huh. The Bible says, But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa. Listen carefully now. And he found a sheep going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Now, the guys in the ship had no idea what was happening. Everybody just paid their transport fare and they began their journey. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea and there was a mighty tempest in the sea so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid and cried every man to his God and cast forth the wares that were in the ship now they are losing all the things that they bought everyone is losing because they, they do not understand what is responsible for this kind of trouble that they cast away their wares to lighten the ship the bible says but jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship and he lay there and what was he doing so jonah was not looking for trouble Jonah didn't want trouble. He only entered and joined himself with a certain people and was sleeping. Hmm. Verse 6. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God, if so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. And they said every one to his fellow, Come, let us cast lots that we may know for whose cause this evil is come upon us so they cast lot and the lot fell upon jonah right so let's see what is happening next verse 8 and then they said unto him tell us we pray thee for whose cause is this evil come upon us what is thy occupation and whence comest thou what is thy country and of what people are thou the lord the God of heaven, which had made the sea and the dry land. Jonah is speaking now. Then were the men exceedingly afraid and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. You would think that because he told them the truth, God would isolate him and deal with him alone for his personal disobedience. Isn't it amazing that it looked like the people were even suffering more than him who disobeyed? Is that true? We don't read any record of him throwing anything. We even read of him sleeping. At least he was resting. And these guys, there was all kinds of turbulence. The things that they had bought, their businesses were failing. They were losing, not because they lost the know-how. But they just hosted one man in that boat. Are we together? For sake of time, when you read on, you would hear that they now ask him and say, what do we do? We want peace. And Jonah said, let me tell you the honest truth. As painful as this is, for as long as I am in this boat with you, this yoke will not lift. Jonah is telling them. He's saying the secret is that you have to separate me from yourselves take me out of that boat and the people said no 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 we can't throw you we can't do this kind of evil let's still try and do our best and they kept on in futility you read down to verse 15 and you see that they did their best and it did not work so they took up Jonah 
and cast him forth into the sea. Read the remaining part. And the sea ceased from her raging. If you can be blessed by association, then it also means you can be caused by association. Are we blessed now? Remember, we are contrasting scriptures. Mark chapter 4. Please give us verse 37. So here we see Jonah in a boat. And on account of his disobedience, people are about to lose their lives. Except that they threw him out into the sea. The Bible now says, when you read from verse 37, for sake of time, that Jesus proposed to his disciples that they would go to the other side. And then the Bible says, as they sojourned, there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the sheep. Does this remind you of any story? The same experience of Jonah, isn't it? So that it was now full. Next verse, we are reading to 41. And he was in the hinder part of the sheep, asleep. Jonah was asleep. Jesus in Matthew chapter 4. Let's start our reading from verse 18. This is Jesus now. And Jesus walking by the sea of Galilee saw two brethren, Simon and Peter. And Andrew, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. Uh huh. And he said unto them, Follow me. Everybody say, Follow me. Follow me, and I will make you. This is Jesus now giving them a proposal follow me leave what you're doing and follow me and he leaves them with an assurance that in following me there is an implication to following me i will make you fishers of men verse 20. the bible says and straightway they straightway left their nets and followed him go with me please to the book of acts chapter 4. acts chapter 4 from verse 10. What was the implication of following Jesus? Acts chapter 4 and verse 10. Peter is speaking now. Be it known unto you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand before you whole. This was the healing of the man at Gate Beautiful. Next verse. This is the stone which was set at not of you builders which is become the head of the corner uh-huh neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved now the bible says when they saw the boldness please go back to go to 13 13 1 13 now when they saw the boldness of peter and john they perceived that where they were unlearned and ignorant men. They marveled. They took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. That means when they saw the boldness of Peter and his brother, perhaps they had come to buy fish from them at one point or the other. And now they are looking at the same people with such boldness, declaring the basis for that man's healing. The Bible says they, they, they couldn't remember that these people had any education as we know. And we have known you people to be ignorant. But then they remembered that this was the implication of their association with Jesus. Jesus told ignorant men, follow me and I will make you. By the time we get to the book of Acts, these men had been so made that everybody around them could testify that we once knew you but this version of you we don't know from whence it has come blessed by association now you have to understand that associations and relationships matter as far as our growth and our excelling in life is concerned many believers i'm not sure that most believers understand the extent to which associations and relationships um, count as far as determining the kind and the quality of destiny 
that you can be able to walk in most people have been very careless about associations about relationships and sadly to their peril and to their detriment i hope that by this teaching god will wake us up again to see that among the factors that need to be in place in my life and your life for us to truly be able to rise to our full prophetic potential in christ is the ability to understand the implication of associations and relationships please write this down understanding the biblical principles of relationships is the key to being truly blessed by association i'll take it again understanding the biblical principles of relationships understanding the biblical principles of relationships is the key to being truly blessed by association that means if you desire to be blessed by association then you have to submit yourself to understand the biblical keys that make for sustainable relationships let's look at two scriptures very quickly number one amos chapter 3 and verse 3 the bible says can two walk together except they be agreed two people two families two companies two believers can two walk together except they be agreed scripture number two Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 24. Proverbs 18, 24. Here's what the Bible says. A man that hath friends must show himself friendly. And that there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. That means friendship and relationships according to this scripture is a harvest. That if you do not sow that seed of friendliness you cannot have that harvest are we together now yes many people desire to have profitable associations profitable relationships that make for their excelling that make for their advancement but i think largely believers have not been taught the kingdom principles that make for relationships i have watched with shock and even wonder at many people who are well-meaning and love the lord with all their hearts i have seen people stunted at certain levels and would not make any noticeable progress not because they are evil at heart not because they do not know god or they do not love god but simply because they have not learned the excellency and the value of relationships and lot went with him there are business people today who have no business being wealthy and blessed except that they were wise and foolish enough to follow people who were wise and by their followership they entered a heaven whose impact for them will be transgenerational there are many people whose lives were correct until they met certain people are we together certain families were going correct until they met certain people certain believers whose lives were in perfect order until they came into certain associations they came into certain relationships that now began to pour into them pungent ideologies and there are many people whose lives were going haywire except that they met a person a people who now brought their lives to order relationships matter your eternal destiny now has been decided or will be decided tonight purely based on relationship that because of how powerful relationships are a man can literally spend the remaining part of his life in hell or in heaven simply because of relationships are we together relationships are very powerful i've had the honor and the privilege by reason of the work god has committed to my hands to talk with very very successful people extremely successful people and i am amazed every time i talk with them a, a major part of their discussions is centered around relationships more than ideas 
in my presence you would see them interrupt our conversation making all kinds of calls and laughing and sometimes in the middle of something serious and they take their discussions very 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 serious and now i'm wondering if these people place that much value on relationships could there be something that we do not know because there are many believers the only relationship you have is god that is wonderful as far as your spiritual growth is concerned but you are learning here now that when it has to do with living in the cosmos you are going to suffer as if it's not god that you gave your life to and that's why god is teaching us these things to help us listen very carefully there are many people today who are in positions where based on the opportunities that god brought to their lives they should never be in that state financially spiritually in influence and so on and so forth many of us have loved ones around us and we have people around who continue to live mediocre defeated lives in the presence of many people who can provide leverage for them they have not been taught the excellency of relationships what betides a man who is left alone to sort your destiny out without anyone to come and assist you there are many people today if they do not pay the school fees of their children by themselves there is nobody to help them if they do not take the journey by themselves there is nobody to help them if they do not serve god by themselves there is nobody to help them if they do not pray by themselves there is nobody to help them relationships are powerful my life today by the privilege of god's grace is a product of relationships i have learned the power and the value and the excellency of relationships for many of you this is the answer to your prayer you have depended on your skill your degree your whatever it is and negated men and just believe that all i have is god and all i have is my wisdom i will find my way through life except that you find out that you get to a point where you are pegged at a level and you may never be able to make constructive progress can i tell you i know people who may never really have anything to present except that the one thing they have is that they have mastered relationships please you may want to write this down relationship can be a stream of income you literally can live off relationships like someone will tell you i am in real estate someone will tell you i work with maybe the presidency you can tell them i earn my living maintaining relationships is there any man in the house of saul that i may show him kindness for jonathan's sake have you read that scripture before and the bible says they brought a man called ziba and ziba had about 15 children yet the king did not talk about his children he sent him to laudeba and he said go and fetch this crippled man called mephibosheth and he said as for you from today because of your association with this man you will spend the rest of your days eating with me on this table and thou ziba you and your children will keep farming for this crippled man relationships are powerful there are people today who have earned a lifetime income simply because of those connected to them did you know that if by tomorrow morning let me just play with your mind a little if by tomorrow morning you suddenly appeared a millionaire verified people will never say what did you do they will say where did you go to this one is not what you did now this one is you you must have met someone there are results that are not about what you did it was about someone that you must have met when solomon had that encounter with god in the night he woke up by the very next day and there was such display of profound wisdom his fame went about as proof that he was no longer alone listen to me if you pay attention to what i teach you i tell you this in the name of jesus you will never remain small if you understand the excellency of this mystery in the kingdom of relationships because many of us have not been taught respectfully speaking there are some of us who come from privileged families 
and we believe that on the strength of the fact that we come from privileged families that have maybe financial resources at the moment we feel that we do not need relationships and so you come to church and they say turn to your neighbor say hallelujah or say god bless you you know and all of that and people just turn and no 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 you are not my class you're not my this and to their shock years later you find out that the person you turn your face against you turn your face against 10 years of your progress are we together But there are principles that we must know and engage if relationships are this powerful and if they hold the key to our rising and our excelling i think i said was it a week or two ago that when the lord moved me to this city i was surprised to see the model of growth and even excellence in this city that when you find individuals grow and excel it is without exaggeration 70 percent relationships more than even competence there are people today whose value has been received across this city not necessarily because it is an expression of their competence but someone who had influence loved them and decided to hold their hands and that opened a world of wonder to them may that happen for you in the name of jesus you've heard me say that in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters are we together now can i tell you this unbelievers across the globe understand this they know the power of relationships you see them invest in relationships with the determination of one who you can almost call a fool and sometimes you are tempted to say what is this level of investment and sacrifice except that when you begin to see the value that comes from that sacrifice it is believers and church people that are largely careless over relationships just because we have god because we have the holy spirit because we have the word of god we have consistently displayed nonchalance especially towards profitable relationships i pray that tonight it will change in the name of jesus christ there are great preachers today who based on the investment of the spirit upon their lives they should not be at the level that they are ministerially sincerely speaking there are worshipers today music ministers worshipers there are people who serve in the body of christ today i've had the honor and privilege of meeting a few people and i am i am amazed at how gifted these people are across boards whether it is in fashion whether it is in politics some of them are christian comedians some of them are you know just gifted people and you are wondering how could someone be this gifted and remain at this level i tell you they have not found the power and the excellency of being connected and being blessed by association i have seen people who have spent time with god in prayer and fasting to access certain levels of graces and then others who came by sincere followership entered into that dimension of grace cheaply an example elijah elisha elisha was never supposed to be a prophet there was no prophecy about him being a prophet elisha was a farmer probably trying to take care of his family but he made up his mind that i may not know my way around my life and destiny but this one thing i will do i have found a man who seems to know what he's doing and i will follow foolishly the sons of the prophet were just there receiving lectures and arguing who would be the next prophet and this one followed sincerely they would even you know just tout him and, sp uh, and speak to him and say do you know that god is going to take your master today and he said i know but don't distract me and when they went beyond the jordan elijah looks at him and says i'm about to go you may not see me again but ask very quickly he said for a double portion and he said ah you have asked a difficult thing but if you can still maintain your focus to see me even as i go relationships i cannot begin to tell you testimonies after testimonies 
of seasons that opened in my life spiritually and otherwise all because of relationships very profitable relationships are you learning now generally speaking there are three kinds of relationships please write it down before we now discuss a few principles there are three kinds of relationships and associations number one there are general relationships general associations every day you meet with people every day you get to the bus station you get to the office you get to the bank you get to a restaurant you interact with people in the marketplace and the bible demands that you honor all men there are general relationships you can go and meet someone for the first time in the market and within the five minutes you have to spend with the person you will gist and talk and laugh as though you were born from the same place and after what you say bye never to see the person again general relationships number two there are seasonal relationships that means these are relationships that are so ordained for seasons and the key to maximizing these relationships is to position yourself through discernment to know what you need to receive within the time allotted are we together now for instance there are some of us that god on account of his desire to lift you he will carry you and keep you in the house of an uncle keep you in the house of an auntie put you under the care of someone to train you you will not be there forever but that relationship was for a season because in his mind he saw that that is the only atmosphere where you will learn character and discipline and diligence you can spend your six years there complaining and saying my uncle is a wicked man rather than discerning that time is ticking i should learn quickly what i need to learn the man you call a wicked man has never begged for bread the man you call a wicked man is still with his wife the man you call a wicked man prays in the morning and prays in the night these are the things you should be learning God took you from wherever Oh Moses He kept you in Pharaoh's house To learn something That you will need later on Seasonal relationships Many of you have aborted seasons Of greatness in your life Because you did not discern Relationships that came In certain seasons Politically Ministerially And so on and so forth rather than discerning to say why did god bring this person this person some of you god gave you jobs not because of the salaries there was something and someone you needed to meet there that after and you had a three-year time span to learn it you spent two years complaining and right now you have about three months left you need grace to catch up quickly hear me there are certain people god took to serve nyc in regions they did not want he kept them there to connect them to certain people so they could learn certain things every time you are a believer and you are in an uncomfortable environment know that god allowed you there to see something if you can look past the pain and yes i know that the woman did not treat you well when you are under her care take your eyes away from her character flaws and learn something about motherhood because the man you are about to marry oh esther you are marrying a hazardous you have to be trained so god can take you and keep you in an uncomfortable environment but rather than learning you are there complaining and saying she bought clothes for the children and did not buy clothes for me it's a stretching to build you listen carefully many of us have had to recycle seasons in our lives because we could not discern seasons there is no great man i know who will be honest with you about the story of their life and you cannot capture in that story times when they were kept in seemingly uncomfortable positions the man who would later be the matthias stevie did you know he started working in the welfare department imagine how much of an insult that would be to him this guy was bubbling with anointing wanting to be a man of god and they say oh yeah serve the rice serve this some of you god will bring you to ministry and while you are eyeing the pulpit god will take you straight to the security department and keep you there and yet in your dreams you are an apostle it is a training don't think god will bring you to the pulpit to come and serve no so we have general relationships please pay attention we're getting deeper 
we have seasonal relationships and let me tell you something with seasonal relationships seasonal relationships are largely the kinds of relationships that god uses to prepare us for destiny some of you can have a two-week course with certain classmates and within that two weeks more than what you are learning god brought you there and connected you to certain people because five years to come you will need one of those people to be used by god to open a door for you and when you are there you will love only christians and hate muslims you will love only christians or love only your tribesmen and hate other people and the spirit of god will say you are wasting time you are not discerning everyone there has potential to be used by god to bless you are we learning the third kind of relationship very quickly they are called destiny relationships these are relationships that do not die because there is prophecy on them general relationships seasonal relationships and destiny relationships these are people who are part of the overall equation of what god is doing in your life all of these relationships happen to us every day and we must have the discernment to know who is in my destiny as sent by god beyond my current level if you do not know this do you know many people especially those who are non-christians they know the value of what i'm telling you they will go out of their way to consult with diviners help me check who are these people who should be in my life this man this woman this business partner are they correct and the man can conjure all kinds of powers and say this one is there to stay home. he will not help you now but 15 years after now this is the man that god will use to lift you so they will maintain these relationships even when they don't make sense the man will be a troublemaker for 11 years and yet you will see the people carrying them like extra luggages and sometimes you are tempted to say can't you drive this driver send this man out of your house except that they understand that in the midst of all of this there is destiny can i tell you there are people who there is no reason why they should be in your life now and god will still say keep them because their relevance is not yet now if you have the discernment to be patient the next 20 years of your life can be secured yes sir Ah, i wish i were lying to you i would have just said sorry but what i'm saying is so true if you ignore what i'm saying you may spend the rest of your life paying the price have you seen people that you once knew and at the time you knew them there was an opportunity and you knew there was something in your spirit there was a call for genuine connection you ignored them either because they had appearances that were not appealing welcome to 10 years later of your life and you find them at the cutting edge of influence and now you're biting your fingers and wondering why didn't i say good morning that day good morning that day would have equaled an estate today are we together yeah. in my life let me tell you sincerely there are people who have been very nice and kind to me in times past and sometimes i sit down and i'm meditating and the lord just brings in their images and brings in things and i sit down and say ah it's been such a long time try to i could call make calls and say find out for me about this person how we see or how is she how are they doing and in all honesty sometimes god just put things in my heart and i just said let me surprise this family and do something for them and they are amazed sometimes they call and they are crying and they are saying apostle you mean you could remember us your god bless you of yesterday you're helping someone lift a bible yesterday can be equivalent to the job of your five children you may not know there are people today the only bad thing that will happen to them in their life is hellfire but as far as this earth is concerned they will never suffer on earth again because they have stretched like an octopus they have mastered relationships and put together systems and structures that immune them from failure perhaps the only way they may the only place they may have missed it is not acknowledging the lordship of jesus but as far as the earth is concerned they have sorted their destinies 
time they make calls there are memories of their investments in the lives of too many people for them to be ignored like Gideon they will make one call and 32,000 people will come and say we remember in 1971 you treated us well what do you want my son is not able to get to the university my son is not getting a visa when I'm the ambassador bring the passport they said that there's something he didn't spell his name well I will correct it myself let me tell you suffering is relative don't generalize it there are people who were wise enough to say i can't suffer now and suffer later so while they were going through the constraints of today they said i may not have had the privilege to be educated i may not have had the privilege to come from a family whose status is noteworthy but now i will use this opportunity can i tell you there are cleaners today who have become billionaires because they honored their way through cleaning into wisdom that blessed them and those who were raised in the same house who trivialized the opportunities did not learn anything there are men of god today who when they started ministry they didn't even know they would be men of god they started maybe as secretaries they started maybe as cleaners and every time they would go and watch the man of god pray three hours because you are the one who cleans his room you have that access to see his personal life wow so this is how this man prays you now go and start doing your own small prayer too and one day fire falls on your head from a cleaner he brings you as an apostle are you learning something tonight yes sir most of you the reason and i'm, I'm saying this sincerely from my heart many of us today god gave us a chance for a beautiful and a great destiny we lost it out of lack of discernment but thank god you are in church hmm. there are many angry people today who keep looking at great people caught across different um areas i used to know this man today he is the chairman board of so 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 and so and he can't even remember me question what investment did you make you can't just show up in people's destinies and say remember me no honestly if you learn what i'm sharing with you tonight you will come and say thank you tomorrow because it will grant you the wisdom that will cause you to excel are we blessed There are people today in their old age they may not even have any respectfully speaking they may not have any responsible children but they will never beg for bread because in their days of youth they were mothers to too many people for them to beg for bread the ones taking care of them today are not even their biological children because of someone who stayed maybe when he was on it as a student he stayed in their house and mama treated that person as though he was their own child and you see the boy with his 200 naira cloth and his his his, his torn shirt he vowed that one day you will laugh because of me 10 years later he comes with a car he comes with a house he comes with a trip a vacation trip and people say this is too much he said no if she could see that glory in me 10 years ago then i will invest in her life for the remaining part of my life make reference to my teachings the law of seasons please if you are yet to listen to it go ahead and listen to it the mystery of pharaoh's dream the law of seasons you can find it on our youtube page koinonia global please listen to it again and again what to do with your seven years of plenty that will help you stand tall even in your seven years of nothing relationships are powerful they are advantageous connections now let's run very quickly and see a few principles knowing then that associations and relationships are all important as far as our growth and excelling is concerned let's learn a few kingdom principles that can help us have and maintain quality destiny relationships are you ready please pray in the spirit in one minute while while you're seated open my eyes oh god grant me the grace blessed by association 
someone here is rising a man of god here is rising a businessman is rising someone is shaking off the limitations of today to say i may not have been able to do anything about yesterday but i can hear this today and it sets me on a course for a great life hallelujah please write number one the first principle when it has to do with maintaining relationships are you ready now avoid proverbs chapter 14 and verse 30 avoid competitive jealousy it is a weakness in all men competitive jealousy has nothing to do with being good or bad it's a limitation in men the moment we feel incapacitated based on an obvious reference the temptation is there it is something you must be intentional about you think because you have the holy ghost because you have the word automatically everyone will at one point or the other be tempted on this wise it takes knowledge to immune you are we together the bible says a sound heart is the tree of is the life of the flesh but envy the rottenness of the bones avoid competitive jealousy next scripture very quickly proverbs 27 and verse 4 proverbs 27 and verse 4 the bible says wrath is cruel and anger is outrageous but who is able to stand before envy that means these things are bad oh. anger is not good but relative to to envy anger is like a saint competitive jealousy can I tell you this? Except you've not been alive for a while. You must have come across this as a temptation. And the Lord is granting you the grace now to build through the immunity of the word. You must enter into a covenant that when God brings you to people and associations that are for your destiny, you must make up your mind that you will fight with the determination of a warrior to make sure that you run away from competitive jealousy. We live in a world of social media. We live in a world of statistics where it is easy for people to compare and contrast whether as a man of God, whether as a businessman, we live in a celebrity world where there is an obsession to show that you are the one doing this or that you have to be very careful. Thank God for westernization, but we must be very careful because it's turning human beings to become something else. Are we together now? There is dignity in your uniqueness. You must appreciate who and what God has made out of you. You know, many times when I speak especially to preachers, when they come to meet me, you can see this air of sincere intimidation as though, Apostle, you are the ones who are doing this and that. And very quickly and lovingly, I hush them and I say, no, do not think so. The basis of our judgment is already flawed based on our mindset. You will have to be God to judge correctly. You would have called Anna the prophet as a failure because all she did was to stay in the temple for more than 60 years who would give her honorarium who would put posters with her face there yet that was the first person that jesus was brought to before he met other people what of simeon the prophet our parameters for measuring success especially in our world today has to be re-edited from the lens of god's word so that we do not put the pressure that begins to fabricate competitive jealousy chances are excellent that when you see a man of god who seems to be charismatic worded as we call seems to have the anointing a crowd some level of influence chances are that based on our human parameter we place those people high we give them we accord them respect and don't get me wrong priesthood has a demand for honor and within the boundary of priesthood the honor that is demanded should be accorded but not to the detriment of those who may seem to be the nobodies because you see i have learned something by scripture and experience when god hides you is proof that you are extremely special to him one of the ways that god shows how special a person or a thing is is that he hides it look at the formation of the human body 
the parts that are more precious that are really responsible for your being alive and healthy are hidden something can bruise your hand right now and within a few days it can heal back but let that happen to your heart let that happen to your liver let that happen to your lungs avoid competitive jealousy is is god speaking to us yes envy and jealousy is something that is in us humans generally there is a psychology to it that you see everyone sincerely no matter how right or wrong generally speaking everyone sincerely is attempting to make efforts to make meaning out of their lives whether or not they end up getting it is a different thing but intrinsically i've had the honor and privilege of talking with all kinds of people you can talk with someone who is a drug addict and you look at him and say my, my friend now that you are in this do you love this kind of life you're living he will tell you no he will say what did you aspire to be they will tell you i wanted to be a pilot i wanted to be a this and that so nobody generally would want to just get up and destroy themselves except that you see i teach the school of ministry students that success has an implication on those who are the onlookers because the moment you are commanding results of any sort generally your result kills the excuses of people who have used excuses to justify mediocrity so if they say i was not able to do well they say no that's not true what of so 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 and so under the same condition and that becomes the root of jealousy avoid competitive jealousy what makes you avoid competitive jealousy the knowledge that you are a unique expression of god's glory unique expression of god's glory hmm. are we blessed number two how do you maintain relationships avoid ill or evil speaking avoid ill or evil speaking and that extends to things like backbiting gossip and so on and so forth avoid ill or evil speaking three scriptures very quickly titus chapter 3 and verse 2 let's hurry up titus chapter 3 and verse 2 second principle avoid evil or ill speaking that extends to gossips but biting titus 3 and verse 2 the bible says to speak evil of no man to be no brawlers but gentle showing all meekness unto all men did you know there are people who literally do not have a conversation if it's not gossip i hope you are not the one as you are talking back at me now i hope you are not just talking about someone else i'm not being sarcastic no discussion if it's not a discussion about this one and that one have you seen what is happening in the presidency have you seen what is happening with men of god in our world and we sit down and analyze for the purpose of demeaning and destruction not building avoid evil speaking god gave you the gift of words and a mind for edification and lifting not for tearing down others are we learning yeah proverbs chapter 6 let's look at 16 to 19 proverbs chapter 6 god is delivering someone right now tonight the bible says these six things that the lord hate now pay attention when the lord tells you he hates something you want to know what it is yea seven are an abomination unto him uh-huh number one a proud look two a lying tongue three hands that shed innocent blood four a heart that devised wicked imaginations five feet that be swift in running to mischief seven what number now six a false witness that speaketh lies and then the bible says he that soweth discord among brethren may god forbid it but the responsibility of leadership and ministry mandates that i teach it that you do not become the person who goes from house to house place to place job to job 
joining the heads of innocent people together did you hear what this pastor said about you did you hear what this one said about you and the other person says really i've been waiting for this moment no one of the ways we make decisions is to understand the consequences that are the other side of the decisions before we make them is god helping us now i don't i don't mean listen we are people of love when i teach like this you know that i teach from a standpoint of love but there are times that we need to bring out he said thy rod and thy staff they comfort me are we together maybe some of us came from backgrounds where sincerely that was all you saw and that was all you knew every time people sat together all that they did was to analyze this analyze that now the difference between a meaningful discussion and backbiting or evil speaking is motive you will eventually have to talk about people and talk about things are we together but the difference is motive as leaders you will have to talk about people as family people parents children you will have to discuss people but the difference is motive when your discussion is to create an occasion to tear people down it is called evil speaking we must obtain grace tonight in the name of jesus christ to be mature to rise beyond the grip of these kinds of things and many of us this is how we derive our relevance among our associations we are usually the ones who bring in news have you heard we say what again ah you didn't hear that the other director did this one and that i saw it all one of the blessings of being purposeful is focus that when you are purposeful your purpose occupies you so much you hardly have extra time for frivolities and the things that make for base living are we together now avoid evil speaking you want to maintain relationships that bless you please pay attention to the end of it because there are a few things about men that i have to tell you number three for sake of time are you ready and are you learning koinonia is quiet thank you holy spirit god is walking are you ready the third key to maintaining quality destiny relationships is avoid offense write it down avoid offense what is offense offense is the ease with which you get irritated agitated angry resentful the ease there are some of us who are as volatile as kerosene or petrol anything at all even if jesus is said loud loud is enough to annoy you no you must avoid offense this was what i believe that this was one of the things that brought john the baptist down because john spent his time and had a wonderful track record but when he was now done he himself said i must decrease that jesus would increase excellent john would have finished strong and well except that when he went he was idle and he was no longer shining an offense came in are we together now yeah and he now went to go and discuss another man's business and they jailed him about to kill him and now he sent the man who ordained jesus he said go and tell him are you the messiah or should we expect another that kind of statement when someone looks at you haven't blessed him for years or haven't blessed her for years and say are you really my father or my mother that is not a statement deserving an answer it is proof that offense has come in the way you are behaving are, are you really my father and what do you think your father would do when you ask him that kind of question because <laughs> everybody that asks it receive it <laughs> are you learning can i tell you this by the pre you will betray you and let people see that there is a loophole you are not really there principles of relationships are you ready practice forgiveness write it down practice forgive 
forgive forgive your wife forgive your husband and you are so uncomfortable coming to church please sit quietly this is why god brought you so that you will be blessed so that you will be lifted the bible says and be ye kind one to another tender-hearted forgiving one another even as god for christ's sake hath forgiven you can i tell you this anybody who tells you forgiveness is easy is lying anybody who tells you forgiveness is easy has not been offended in this life there are people who are too innocent to for, to, to understand this teaching this night nothing has happened in their life they've been shielded by so many people forgiveness is a kind of giving and you see the thing about forgiveness is when you forgive you don't help the one you are forgiving you help yourself it is true bitterness and offense is like piercing yourself with a knife and holding it there bitterness and offense is like drinking poison and expecting another person to die you keep gulping poison and watch you are not dead let me drink another one you are not dead let me drink another one are you learning practice forgiveness Luke chapter 6 and verse 37 let's hurry up Luke 6 37 Kilamando Saprakatuziata principles of relationships it says judge not and ye shall not be judged condemn not and ye shall not be condemned forgive and ye shall be forgiven did you know that the people who have it hardest to forgive are the ones who are even in greater need of forgiveness is that true you will never be able to excel having profitable relationships and profitable associations you will never be able to live with anybody any organization any friends at all if you do not practice forgiveness there are families that have siblings that are like tom and jerry cats and dogs it is possible that there are couples here listening and here in koinonia they don't talk to one another when it's time to sleep everybody just goes to their side of the bed just jumps there and everybody is talking to god two of them this one is saying lord i thank you you are my god and he's saying it in a way that pains the other person lord if i depend on men will, will i ever rise thank you for your oh, come on listen this is the night when you go back home and swallow your pride tonight come to the school of the spirit don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life it's a little here a little there and then your day will done he's at work in you changing everything in obedience listen can i tell you this if you don't practice saying i am sorry you will never be able to excel in this life nations have gone to war today simply because someone was too proud to say i'm sorry i'm sorry does not kill i'm sorry simply means i am better today than i was yesterday are we together there are people who have lost jobs today simply because they could not say i am sorry there are people who have lost profitable relationships business relationships they have been driven from companies today because they could not say i am sorry let me teach you something do not allow your spiritual growth to make for an occasion where you cannot say i'm sorry there are parents that need to say i'm sorry to their children don't be ashamed it does not stop you from being a father or mother there are children who need to say i'm sorry if a man pays your school fees and you come back with a result that is an evil report why should he not quarrel you <laughs> now you get angry and you are not contributing anything i'm sorry has sent nations to go for war there are people today politicians including men of god there are people today who cannot see eyeball to eyeball i am sorry the pride of man is beyond comprehension is someone learning yeah 
you must as a principle practice forgiveness remember that forgiveness is a kind of giving apostle you don't know me i'm cool but if anybody annoys me it's an attack we've been holding miracle services here we've asked that people write their prayer request why do you think we kneel down and pray on these things see i'm saying this to you so that i i trust god that god will help us to live such an excelling life in truth i will tell you it's easier said than done this is why we need the holy spirit are we together maybe there is a couple that need to go back home tonight and say look let's stop this thing this is one year of this childishness let's sit down the man is waiting for the woman to take the step i paid your bride price the woman is waiting for the man to take the step you are the one who came to ask me you see provided this kind of self keeps happening god in heaven who created us is not ashamed to come and say i have loved you with an everlasting love i have drawn you with my loving kindness self is a terrible thing it can recycle seasons of pain again and again and again there are people who stole from factories and were sent away and just the unashamedness to go back and say look i really am sorry this is it i i take responsibility there are politicians respectfully speaking who have maybe in time past i hope not presently so have stolen money from the and i'm sorry and a sense of responsibility no sir practice forgiveness some of you are even offended with god right now god i don't know how you want us to pray again i've prayed everything you want one day or there i wish you you could read some of the text messages people sent me since they cannot see god you who have said you are representing him they carry that aggression that since he didn't reach the throne room they bring it and land it on you they can write something like apostle good evening i'm tired i don't know that, 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 that and this and that and that i'm offended since god hears you talk to him that i'm tired and you know what now imagine that i see that and i call the person i say see don't think because i'm preaching quite no no see our world interprets a life of aggression as masculinity by masculinity i don't just mean it to males when you are cool-headed and you are temperate the world looks at you as a weak person they like people who are aggressive you are a you are you are, you are almost like i don't want to use the expression a freedom fighter because uh, you know and it looks like you you are somebody who fights to the end and people say that's right can i tell you in this kingdom learn from jesus learn from jesus there are times when you are strongest when you look weakest yes sir yes sir and when you are strong and you can bring your strength under control you are strong indeed i know a gentleman many years ago he used to be a builder and then he fights boxing I think they have a license you don't fight outside the ring there there's there are some rules that they have and one time you know he had a problem with this bike man and the guy the bike man so he told me was just shouting and said don't think because you are big i can be and, and he looked at him and said oh dear i mean look at this look at this look at this guy <laughs> can i tell you when you have the power to do so much and you can restrain yourself you are you deserve an applause by the whole world indeed for the dexterity and the excellency of your maturity god had the power to call ten thousand angels and yet he was led like a sheep to the slaughter you could imagine satan and the roman government saying finally we brought this man to his knees this was the lion of the tribe of judah the root of david looking so weak had bled and looked very weak let me tell you this fear weak people it was weakness that killed strength on the cross when you see people look weak or act weak towards you 
it's not that they are incapacitated it's that they are working based on a higher level of light and intelligence by this some of you need to go to your office tomorrow and stop that petty fight and you know some of these things that is almost rubbishing your pedigree no buy a gift and go and give the person and the woman is saying no there must be charm in this gift you will think she will say thank you no i don't trust this person go and throw it no problem as for me i've made up my mind that i will live a peaceful life a peaceful life is a goal that you can set and live a peaceful life within the times that you have serving the purposes of the kingdom and i challenge you my proposal to you is that you rise to a higher realm of living there is a superior realm of living above and beyond the grips of this kind of mediocre living there is there is living with excellence and this is the key we're almost done number number five very quickly you must have a high degree degree of tolerance still colossians chapter 3 from 12 to 13 tolerance is similar to forgiveness except that tolerance means you are prepared to have that offense happen again <laughs> you see the difference between forgiveness and tolerance is that forgiveness is creating making accommodation for weakness are we together now a one-time weakness tolerance means you factor in that limitation and live with it because it will happen again and again and again there are people who you need to go past forgiving them they will not change create a system of tolerance are we together i remember many years ago truthfully speaking i was talking to a couple and i think the woman was saying that the man that he is not responsible and yet he prays like a prayer warrior when she he is shouting to the roof and you know she just said he should reduce his voice he's disturbing her and so on and so forth uh I, I i couldn't say forgive him because that will not end for as long as that man will pray now that you are married to him you are there for life they ask you all these questions you said yes now you are there are we together now and honestly when i saw the man he truly is a prayer warrior when you hear his voice you know that oh no this man is not he doesn't he doesn't come and just mumble tongues he prays he's praying and she felt he was not being as responsible as she should be now how do you tell her forgive him forgive him means you don't expect it to happen again tolerance means it will happen again and again and again an example your security man remember you forgave him january he promised that it will not happen again and he slept on duty he slept on duty and promised that if he sleeps again you should drive him and he slept before you came here so let me advise you and tell you what to do you don't forgive him you tolerate him you see disappointment only comes when there are expectations when there are no expectations there is no disappointment tolerance some of the people that god is going to be using to bless you and lift you let me tell you for a major part of your relationship with them you will feel like killing them and killing yourself you will need to be tolerant until the day the grace that was on them for you comes to fruition do you think that do you know read about elijah historically speaking you know that elijah was a temperous man so don't blame the sons of the prophets i'm sure they had had it enough with him but elisha said no way it was dr Murdoch who said adaptation is proof of honor you have to learn to adapt the man who god has sent to help you and give you money to start out life he's an angry man don't forgive him tolerate him he will insult you for one year but the day he sends an alert into your account it will be an answer to your prayer of 10 years endure 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 hardship as a faithful soldier don't say i'm angry is he god and then you make that costly mistake and you find out later through your pain that all blessings come from god through men to men are we together i'm saying this because 
I doubt if there are any persons here who are not connected to some superiors who may not have the 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 most commendable character disposition it's not unusual with leaders whether in ministry whether in corporate life whether in family life you will find reasons to have superiors contemporaries and even subordinates that may not be at their best character wise now the responsibility is on you to build that system of tolerance so that you can stay in the harshest of environments and still find your joy until the blessing that that environment should give you comes many of you if you don't learn this you will abort many great seasons in your life because of anger i rather die than come and be washing a car for my uncle am i god and the holy spirit says keep washing but then one day as you wash that car you will not know you are washing your own car and your uncle comes out and says sit down here let me tell you a story in 1945 and by the time he's done telling you that story and he tells you how he lived under a bridge he tells you how he was betrayed and stabbed when a car hit him he now starts telling you his stories then you will be broken and you will say and you are still standing you lost your job you lost all your investments in 1971 you went abroad only for you to be jailed in prison for five years uncle i never knew this about you and now you see the reason why he's suspicious of everybody because he's had over how many decades of pain can i tell you you must be able to tolerate and forbear people just because they have not told you their stories there are people who have been so broken and wounded in relationships the moment they see anybody coming close i'm not even talking of just married relationships any kind they have been scammed by business people someone has come and said i want to marry you and the person just broke their heart and went away and the moment they see someone coming that fear comes give accommodation for people's pain don't just generalize and conclude there are others who have done businesses with people they were scammed cheated are we together and they had nothing to say so when you come to meet them and say there is a business idea and they become so meticulous and they are asking questions who is your father where do you come from where do you worship and you're saying all for this small business uh -uh. be tolerant when people have gone through pain in their life their pain builds a new vista by which they view life are we together there are people seated here right now you are listening to me and you are only here truly because of the message of god the things you've gone through in your life did you know that there are children who have killed their own parents do you know there are parents who have killed their own children terrorists are all across the nation and you will be surprised that some of the people who have been kidnapped the information and the planning came from people who were close sometimes a kiss that is supposed to be a sign of intimacy can be the signal to the enemy and i'm standing here only because you may you made a way that's the testimony of certain people here they set up five ten companies and traveled abroad returned back and found out that people had changed the documents and left them in pain forbear just because people do not tell you their stories does not mean they do not have stories are we together I remember a man of god who wanted to invite me some years ago and he kept asking questions who is this where did he come from and the people who were trying to encourage him to invite me at the point they got fed up and they said what kind of man is this and when the person reached me in anger and said can you imagine wanted to give this man the privilege of having you and he was asking all kinds of senseless questions i said no you may not know who has climbed his pulpit and caused a lot of pain to his membership you may not know who climbed this pulpit and used one hour to create something that took five years to correct allow the man vet me 
there are some of you here you heard about me many years ago but it took you many years of watching of looking of hearing of verifying your suspicions until you got to a point where you are comfortable you deserve to be left until you find reasons to there are people who have not gone through anything in life or have gone through too many things they don't fear again <laughs> yes sir there is a way you go through too much pain you don't fear pain again they bring a business you say no problem i just came out of prison let's do another one if it doesn't work that's it <laughs> and i'm standing here only because you you made a way made a way when our backs were against the wall and it moved to see it was all about you made a way and we're standing here only because you made write it very quickly we have to end number six what is the sixth principle that you need to engage if you want to be blessed by association you want to maintain relationships number six you have to become an active contributor to the growth of that relationship you want to maintain relationships that count you must be an active contributor to the growth of that relationship parasitic relationships are self-centered and dangerous relationships unfortunately our world is full of these kinds of parasitic relationships where the contribution is one-sided you see this with business people you see this with family people you see this with ministers can i challenge you do not be in any relationship where you are only receiving there are people like that if you ever see a text or a call from them they are in need so they will send the text and our ah, calvary greetings in the name of jesus christ you know that that's just a preamble sorry i've come again oh you know that uh, it was by this time last year can i tell you this it's a terrible thing for people to know you as being a self-centered person it's an ugly way to live biology nature teaches us that it is giving and receiving that balances life there are people as i speak to you now they are so self-centered they don't care what happens to anybody they fish relationships like fishermen what can i get what is the need for me and that is the ultimate drive can i tell you this it is heartbreaking when people know that you are in their lives only to receive never to give it is a terrible thing I used to give an example many years ago in Zaria how that I, I hope it doesn't happen again you know there are conductors you know conductors that um, that 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 manage these vehicles that pick people town service and sometimes you see them all in an effort to get the car filled they can come and dance around you and say oh beautiful lady come and enter this car and to them they are looking at hundred naira or 200 naira that's all that they want the car to be filled so that they will move and out of that self-centered nature they will flatter you and say all kinds of nice things while they are talking to you if someone enters that car and is filled they will leave you right there and be on their way going now you are, you are just about to be enjoy the moment it is painful when people know that all that you do to them is for yourself through them not for them that means that you are nice to someone but you've sat down and you've calculated it that in being nice this is what i have to gain so let's be nice let's call him apostle because these signs and wonders we need it after we receive it, you can call him whatever it is that's why it pleases the father so much when we love him and we worship him because of who he is not because of what we get it gives joy to the father when he sees us rolling on the floor blessing his name and worshiping him and he comes to you and says to what end and you say i just love you for who you are imagine that someone be have you seen people who were so nice you began to be afraid 
because you suspected that this this cannot be for nothing and then you now meet them and say okay so why i mean just what is it and they say no i'm just like that just like that because our world is a selfish world every time people say good afternoon sir they are not saying good afternoon sir what they mean is you better not allow my honor pass like that without your reciprocating it it is terrible and almost irritating to live in a self-centered world there has to be someone who is true enough that can love you for who you are stand with you and by you for who you are and let me tell you this there are people like that do not think everybody is a self-centered person who is just trying to use people no there may be many but there are a few that are sincere when they love they love sincerely when they give they give sincerely become an active contributor to any relationship that you are part of in your office don't sit down and say our boss is there whilst we are here they've not increased our salary now december is coming let's watch and see what will happen now what can i do for you my lord i want you to know my heart is your very powerful song what can i do for you my lord i want you to know my i prayed and i told god something and it's still my confession today that i have never sought his face because of tea and bread it's not fame or anointing or power that brought me to ministry i came because i truly loved him and for the rest of my life for as long as i have breath living in me money fame reputation will never be motivations for my serving the lord thank god for the little that you know he's brought all of the tokens that follow priesthood i am grateful and indebted to him but that was never the motivation i am amazed to see the things that drive people into ministry today i am amazed to see the things that drive people into the pursuit of god today there are many people who seek him simply because they said you will not fail when you seek him that's an investment i love him with my life if he tells me to put down this mic today and become a cleaner in this house i stand by the god of heaven and i tell you this you will come back next week and find me cleaning here with the same joy and the same passion that i had because it's an honor to serve his majesty it's a privilege to be counted as one who can be a lifter of his word to the nations you must change your perspective many of you are disappointed today because you are not contribution conscious you are receiving conscious you come to the house of someone and you say this man is a rich man see money all over the table and you are watching senator honorable and in your mind you are saying god punish you sir you are my uncle and we've been suffering like this his car is dirty you never wash it there is no let me tell you this ask blessed people or people of influence they are very very fast to detect people who are selfless you come to the house and in five minutes you are washing the car you are looking for something to do first they will suspect that you are not sincere then they will allow time to prove your sincerity when they find you true they will bring you in and even treat you more than their biological children there are people who are working in certain corporations today not because they merited it by their technical skills they have shown such level of selflessness and dependability it's true do not be a self-centered person what is in it for me we do this um, sadly i loved my precious nation nigeria but we need to change our values and our ideology every time we see a politician or a head of parliament or some wealthy person the first thing is what is in it for me wow this is his car sean sir good afternoon sir sir i'm, I'm great you know why can't you think and say what can i do how can i improve this man's life sir it looks like can i wash your car 
for how much no 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 nothing just to honor you as a seed it is powerful when you find selfless people who love you and love what you are doing just like that can i tell you i found a few of these people in my life and in this ministry and my goodness it is priceless to watch selflessness in action you see everything done with passion and the goal is never for self change your mindset some of you have been hated by many people today battles that are needless I can't be friends with this man he's not a millionaire what will i get nothing go what of you i hear your dad is a senator uh, can we be friends oh he didn't win the election oh really okay you'll hear from me and that's it <laughs> nobody wants to commit himself to a life over something that will not last because of selflessness there are politicians here and there are many who are listening you see people dance around them during election get their money the moment they lose that election not even a call to say may the lord encourage you mm -mm. they delete the number immediately and they go to the opposing person well done sir i didn't tell you i've really been for you it's not just that i didn't I made up my mind that as far as it depends on me I will serve the Lord with all my heart can I tell you sincerely my beloved people I have never served you and served Jesus so that I can get something for my pocket or get a name I stand by the God who called me I'm telling you this when I serve you I serve you as a privilege from the depth of my heart it is an honor that God gave me if i die today you will try to raise me back <laughs> if i don't wake up you will go and throw me in the grave and that's the end of it and the work of the lord continues it is a privilege to be able to serve most men of god will not be able to say this because they think if you say it, people will look down on you is the truth you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth as for me i will serve with all my heart i will serve his majesty and i'll serve as many as he has brought under my care but let me challenge you be a selfless person there are some of you who because of this attitude of not contributing you can stand with a friend you are discussing kingdom you can buy bonds for almost 200 naira eat in the presence of the person finish it squeeze the leather drop it and you are still talking what sort of a life is that we have to change there are some of us who will buy food in front of children they are running around us you will eat there and the children that don't disturb me and finish it there and leave the children when i saw the video of our our the visitation to the idp camps i saw the hunger ravaged faces of some of those children i was almost in tears i said every one of these kids have a destiny in christ and just because you are not in their position however you are able to reach them let these people see the love of jesus i was even told i think i hope i'm right on that that there was one who had had malaria to a point that it deteriorated the person he was in coma in the camp there it was when the doctors when they saw the person they rushed i don't i hope the person survived can i tell you life is beautiful when you are a giver life is beautiful when you can give there is a law that when you give it comes to you but focus on the giving it is more blessed to give not just money there are many of us who are like that a program is organized one naira from it does not come from you someone is doing something in your city and your area you are never part of anything that does not directly benefit you if your name will be written on it and some kind of honor will be given then i can do it but once i'm going to be silent no i want a name through it now it is my prayer for everyone here that every relationship that you have now in your life and every association you become an intentional contributor if you're a man of god you have friends don't sit down and say people are forgetting my birthday forgetting my anniversary forgetting no become a contributor to that relationship 
hello how are you i notice it's like i've been sensing in my heart that you're not happy is there anything i can pray for you for eh, no 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 please talk to me you can trust me i can pray and the person says thank god i found someone do you know what it means to be a shoulder for someone to lean on it's more than being gifted being gifted is wonderful but it can be limited you've heard me say it, that my greatest desire aside being a minister of the gospel is that by the grace and the mercy of god that i can be a shoulder for someone to lean on it's true we don't have all this life that if someone is crying let my hands at least be able if i cannot do anything let me help to wipe the tears if i cannot pray with you and i cry with you together and i say lord show mercy to this person it's a contribution let me challenge you do not allow this week from today till next sunday happen without you doing something active and quality in the life of someone especially someone undeserving are we blessed let me give you the final one and we're done for tonight so six be an active contributor to the growth of that relationship it is also the reason why we are having the workers appreciation dinner an opportunity i'm the one hosting it to tell the people thank you thank you it's one thing to be called by god i can tell you one truth that god has blessed me and blessed this ministry with such passionate workers people who love jesus sincerely you know that they are not just doing it for apostle number seven the seventh key as far as maintaining relationships that eventually culminate to your being blessed is that you practice genuine love write it down this is the last practice genuine love three scriptures very quickly proverbs 10 12 proverbs 10 12 hatred stared up strife but love covered all sins hatred stared up strives but love covered all sins john 13 35 very instructive scripture john 13 35 by this this singular sign this singular attribute shall all men know that ye are my disciples not when you are an anointed apostle not when you have a great ministry not when you pray in tongues by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if ye have love not for me one to another your love life is the clearest biblical index to measure your maturity more than tongues more than rema more than greek and hebrew words more than the theatrics of of ministry love first john chapter four first john chapter four from verse um let's see 26 first john 4 let's start from is there 20 first john 4 if a man say i love god and hated his brother he is a liar for he that loveth not his brother whom he had seen how can he love god whom he had not seen are you seeing that now that if you say you love god and you hate men there is something questionable about your love your love for god is tested in and through your love for men can i tell you this loving the undeservable is true love when you love people who do not deserve to be loved that is true love one of the secrets that i learned about walking in the anointing is that if you want to see the power of god 
manifest in such marvelous dimensions in your life then you must be one who works in genuine love not selective love genuine love it must become your default disposition and i have by the grace of god kept this truth and i have seen it work in my life there are pastors who hate their members you cannot bless a people you hate the power of god cannot flow through you to bless the people god sees my heart and god knows that i love everyone who is part of this vision that i love you sincerely not because of anything tm no no my beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands my beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands yes medical doctors are here they will tell you that living in anger bitterness jealousy all these things i have mentioned they don't just have spiritual side effects they have medical side effects you can literally dry up your bones there are many sicknesses today that were not originally caused by demons demons only found a door and cast in on it to bring many people down to their knees and sadly many to the grave and lot went with him association demands that you rid yourself of jealousy association demands forbearance forgiveness association demands that you become an active contributor show me any man or any woman by god who works in keeping with these principles and remains alone show me any man or woman by god who works in keeping with these principles who will remain small and mediocre no it is a key to an excelling life it is a key to an excelling destiny many people by this message tonight god intends for you to be healed to show you first and foremost that you're ignoring the power of associations and relationship is costing you more than you would ever know and then number two to make up your mind determined by the power and the grace of god that from tonight until forever i am going to insist on quality relationships by practicing these principles go back home go online and listen to this message again and again don't assume you have gotten everything listen to it as many times as your spirit would require until it becomes spirit and life and then obtain grace from god to immediately become a practitioner of these truths and you will watch your life with astonishing wonder move from one dimension of grace to the other first your life will become a true expression of the life and the character of the christ in experience and then number two you will find out that you become an attractive force drawing all kinds of men all kinds of helpers all kinds of individuals who come into your life ready to hold your hands ready to defend you ready to stand by you ready to lift you that no matter what the problem has been as far as background and the rest is concerned god is giving you a key tonight that can help you are you ready to pray please rise up on your feet rise up on your feet let's take a minute or two to pray and then i'll speak over your life listen to me i want you to hear this while you're standing i hope that in another teaching god will grant us grace probably next year to teach you about men 
there are things about men you need to understand one all men are men so let it be no news to you all men no matter how great no matter how anointed all men the best of any and every man is still a man so there should be no surprises number two listen carefully that as flawed as men are god still hides his treasures in men the secret of working with men was found in the riddle of samson out of something strong came something sweet samson passed to go and see a particular woman and he found he killed a lion and after seven days the bees they did not find a fresh green tree to put honey they went and put honey inside a carcass it's a riddle there if you want the honey you must be willing to endure the smell of that carcass in the midst of the smell of that carcass there is still honey in it out of that angry man still there is an anointing that can lift you out of that nonchalant father who does not care whether your school fees is paid or not there might be one prophetic blessing that can come out of his bowels to lift you out of that self-centered relative who does not care if you die one day his influence is able to open a door for you out of that man of god who always looks sarcastic talk sarcastic one day you will find the treasure of wisdom that can help you out of your siblings that may not seem to be people who have whatever kind of wisdom you desire something will come out from them that will become your blessing prayer point number one lord give me the stamina and the discernment to endure relationships until that which was supposed to come out from them to me comes lift your voice and pray the grace to endure and the grace to be an active contributor to every relationship go ahead and pray ministerial relationships business relationships go ahead and pray even our relationship with god there are times we don't understand him but we trust him we trust him there are times it does not make sense what he's doing there are families who trusted god and lost loved ones there are people who trusted god and lost jobs there are times it looks like god seems to not be understood but even at that we still love him and we trust him there are times that you as a person your life becomes complicated even to you you may not even be able to explain and give definition to what you are doing someone is praying lord grant me the grace to know that all men are men at best grant me the grace to be able to endure the humanity of men until i receive that treasure that is locked up within them hallelujah last relation last um prayer point on relationships now we're going to pray father in this season bring to my life the strategic people you have ordained for the next level of my destiny and listen 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 i'm not done and grant me the grace to maintain those relationships until they bless me do you understand the prayer point you are praying listen there are some of us because of this teaching god is going to close some relationships in your life believe me you will not like it but it's a circumcision they will have to go out because they are not profiting where god is taking you to and it does not have to be evil people there are good people who are not so constructed for where god is taking you god will have to cut them out of your life but then god is also introducing new people into your space and you must have the discernment to receive them because some of them will not come in the form that is worthy of reception you need discernment therefore pray lord in this prophetic season of my life bring to my life the people that are responsible please pray you are a politician you are a businessman you are a man of god you are following online you are a pastor watching 
you're a man of God, lift your voice and pray. A family person, Lord, bring to my life in this season. My heart is open for strategic connections. Connections that will be the lift, the ladder and the leverage for the next level of my life. Grant me the fortitude to be friendly. Grant me the patience and the endurance to receive of these people when they come. Please pray. Send to my life, O oh God, the men and women who are needed for the next season of my destiny. And grant me the grace to invest strategically into these relationships. You can also pray, cut away from my life, O oh God, relationships that will only end up destroying me. Cut away from my life, O oh God, relationships that are not profitable as far as the next level of my kingdom agenda is concerned. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God called Abraham and Lot went with him. And Lot went with him. It's time for you to follow and follow sincerely. And it's time for you to be followed to a safe heaven. People should not follow you to doom. And you should not follow men to destruction. Followership leads to glory and honor, not destruction. Pay attention to your association. There's no such thing as we're born together with. No, no, no. Throw away all those sentiments and be very unashamed. Go back. Let me give you an honest assignment. Maybe two of them. Number one, go and write the list of the top five people in your life who are the greatest contributors to your growth, your loving Jesus, and your excelling in life invest in those relationships i have taught it here you cannot generalize relationships and treat everybody the same not everybody thinks you are a big deal there are people today joshua selman to them looks like oh it's just one of those men of god that's all right there are people who joshua selman looks to them like oh it's, it's, a, it's a man of god i think he's doing something well there are others oh joshua selman is our relative somewhere there are others who believe that Joshua Selman is a gift from God, sent from God to them. I would be stupid to treat all these groups of people the same way. No, I love everybody, but I will not invest the same level of energy and passion into it. No. See, when you find people who make you a big deal under God, be unashamed to invest your time and energy and your resources. There are people who have shown genuine care, genuine love, genuine concern genuine prayer out of their way there are others who don't care i'm not talking about me i'm saying when you go and look at your emotional space your world today you will find people who sincerely love you who will give anything for you do not throw those people away no there are people who are very casual in your life construct your emotional energy don't just throw your strength to anybody and be disappointed. When people sow that seed of honor, respectfully speaking, there are men and women of God across the globe, across this nation, who have gone out of their way intentionally to build a relationship with me. I've been humbled, flattered, and even broken by their unashamedness to want a relationship. And now I have reciprocated with sincerity and love. You see that? If you don't invest into any relationship, don't expect returns. Don't barge into people's lives and expect that they give you the same place they are giving with everyone. It doesn't make sense. I think this is a word of caution for many of us before we wrap up. There are many of us who just appear in people's lives. No antecedents. There is no track record of your standing by them, helping them, committing to their lives and their welfare. You can't just appear into people's lives and want to be given a place of honor the same way with those. No, no, it's not done that way. There are people today I have not committed into their lives 
to the degree that they should give me certain levels of honor it would be stupid of me to want that level of honor i have not made that level of spiritual financial emotional investment into that relationship similarly there are others who um you should not just put yourself under pressure to feel that i have to invest this much no what was put in it show me prayers show me sacrifice show me forgiveness show me tolerance these are the indices that makes for when someone is investing into a relationship he does it with joy knowing that this is what has gone into it i'm saying this as a word of caution so that you don't find offense when you call a man and say i know this man i'm calling him and he's not picking he's a ceo today and he's acting strange were you there when he cried when his children died were you there when they were crying in pain and were you there when he had a legal case were you there to pray with him don't appear many people do this even to politicians these people go through pain they go through all kinds of embarrassment and god now shows them mercy and the moment they emerge those who were there that suffered with them we come and push those people away and come and stand and want a position of honor it is unfair so you must obtain grace from god you must find someone's destiny that is worth your commitment don't wait and say who is there who will commit to me it may be a mother a father a brother a sister a spouse a leader a man of god whoever make sure you do something let me pray for you we have to wrap up father in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare you have taught us a very deep mystery blessed by association that our relationships and associations have far-reaching implications than most of us know i pray for everyone under the sound of my voice if there is any relationship that through carelessness or lack of discernment you have lost today that is costing you so much i pray and i call upon my god who is also your god may god show you mercy and bring restoration in the name of jesus christ number two i pray for you that all the principles that need to be engaged to maintain quality profitable relationships relationships with your superiors your contemporaries and your subordinates i declare the grace to walk in keeping with these principles may you receive that grace now in jesus name thirdly i pray for you because i sense in my spirit like I, I i said this weeks ago or i think a few months ago that there are people whose seasons are coming to an end in their lives and other seasons are starting let me pray for you the persons the groups the associations that god has mandated himself to be part of your life for your rising for your lifting in the name of jesus you will not miss out with them in this season everything that makes for offense everything that makes for bitterness jealousy unforgiveness i declare that it leaves your life right now the endurance you need the adaptability you need the stamina you need the maturity the sense of forbearance you need to maintain these prophetic relationships so that they can deliver to you that which god has put in them i release that grace upon you in jesus name and hear me those of you who currently have relationships mandated by god and it has is yet to deliver to you the prophetic benefit that that should have come from that relationship i decree and declare beginning from this week begin to reap the benefits that come with that relationship in the name of jesus christ and hear me whoever has forgotten you that should remember you for the sake of the name of the lord in this season i call upon the god of my covenant and i declare that this week will not pass until they call you in the name of jesus christ 
keep standing everyone the greatest relationship that we need that makes for us to be blessed indeed please no movement let's respect the altar call is the relationship with jesus christ you can have a relationship with joshua selman koinonia the body of christ but in order of priority the greatest relationship that the bible mandates that a man can have that the profitability of that relationship is here on earth and even in the afterlife is the relationship with jesus for many of you you have received this call and this proposition for a long time jesus is calling you he's standing like one who truly desires that relationship now there are two groups of people i want to call very quickly our time is up number one those who are saying apostle whilst listening to you the holy spirit began to convict me i'm inside i'm outside following online the overflows i need jesus that's category number one number two there are those who are saying apostle i came to jesus but i truly trivialized my relationship with him and i've replaced him with so many things and i want that restoration of relationship wherever you are i'm going to count one to five we have just a minute for this whether you are across the balcony inside here all of the overflows very proudly like one who is coming back to a savior and a friend come god bless you i'm counting one to five softly and tenderly jesus is calling calling for you and for me keep coming two three is calling for you come home come home you are weary, come home Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling Calling For, are you coming to Jesus? Come to Him with pride and come to Him with joy The Bible declares that as many who will come to Him That He will in no wise cast away Come, come he can give you a new beginning this can be a fresh start for you do not allow december go like that jesus is calling no matter what you have done no matter where you have been he can give you a new beginning in the name of jesus now i salute every single one of you thank you for your determination to come to jesus when you come to him he does not bring you down he lifts you up it is your relationship with him that begins your journey in this kingdom are we together the bible declares for god so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life thank you for coming may i request that you lift your right hand inside and outside everywhere following online and all of you who are following from your homes your offices your devices you can follow lift your hands before jesus i want you to say this after me but when you say it let it be from the depth of your heart say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i need you in my life i declare that you are my savior you are my lord and you are my king i declare that i am a recipient of eternal life from tonight i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight i am a child of god i love you with all my heart this relationship is forever therefore i go forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for this once thank you for the joy of this divine relationship and this divine connection indeed they are blessed by the authority of scripture i declare your sins forgiven and i declare that the lord gives you a new beginning from tonight in the name of jesus christ you will enjoy the joy of salvation and that the lord will connect you with like-minded believers 
who love you and love Jesus and love his purposes and that all together you will go as a winning team triumphing from one level of grace to another i commend you to the ministry of the word and the holy spirit i pray that you be built you be grounded in truth in jesus name i pray amen and amen thank you so much for this noble decision may i request in one minute that you follow the counselors they are waving the placard at you please be beware of the cranes i want you to follow them they are at my right which is your left koinonia let's celebrate them very quickly let's celebrate them very quickly hallelujah praise the name of the lord the counselors will have a word with you um they'll just get your details and pray with you and you'll be good to get back to your seat hallelujah now i announced the last time as a ministry we usually close for the year our last service for 2021 will be on the 19th 19th that means we have about two services am i right please do not miss these two services because um, next week and the last service is going to be next week we'll have it will be an anointing service we'll take the time to just anoint and pray for preservation and please make sure you invite every one of your loved ones to come and then we'll have some time um, and just just declare preservation i want that everyone who is here we need to see you in 2022 we shouldn't hear that you went and something just happened and the lord will preserve you supernaturally in the name of jesus christ please rise up as we close thank you again for all who have come the lord bless you the lord honor you in jesus name let's share the grace together in fellowship the grace of our lord jesus christ the lord thank you for watching our entire video today if you feel you can bless someone please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media